Okay. Where's the camera? Is that straight it's on ahead? The TV. Okay. Oh no. Yes. Cool. We are started. Great. So well, welcome to the Many Voices Info session. Um, thank you guys for coming. Uh, we're going to kind of walk through the application process to start, but I just wanted to get a sense of, of you guys, if you knew, if you were thinking about applying, um, you know, in terms of the fellowship or were you thinking more of the mentorship, just so I could guide my conversation oh, a bit well, more. Last year I applied for the fellowship. Okay. Oh, good. Great. So you'll, you'll okay. probably mm -hmm. continue with that. Great. And what about you? I think about the mentorship every now and then. Uh -huh. Very okay. not, I'm not going to commit to anything right now, Haley. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll go over both equally in any event. It's just good to know what you're thinking. Um, and then um, I um, will be talking. I'm the Associate Artistic Director here, and I manage the fellowships. And Christina runs the um, Many Voices program. So she can offer more insights in terms of um, what your relationship would be working with her specifically because she really is the principal guide through the, the process. Um, and, um, and of course, if you have any questions at any time after this, you can either contact Christina or I or Amanda um, specifically about logistics in terms of applications. Uh, so to start with, um, let's just look at the fellowship, the first thing on the page. So you'll see that um, it's a $10,000 stipend, which is significantly larger than we've had in other years. We're really excited that we were able to um, beef up the um, stipend for this program with the support of the Jerome Foundation. and. There's $2,500 towards living expenses and $1,500 in terms of play development. So the living expenses component of that can be used in a myriad of ways. Um, it could be used for uh, health care, for example, or it could be used towards um, child care or it could be used towards rent. Um, so there's there's a lot of flexibility in that pool of money, and we try to keep it uh, flexible because, um, as you know, that there's one uh, fellow that will be a local fellow, and there's one fellow that can either be local or be a national fellow, and so we like to keep that flexibility in those funds in case it's, you know if there's someone moving from out of town, that person could use the money to move here, and mm -hmm. if it's somebody local. That person could use that money, you know, for healthcare or childcare or groceries or whatever um, living expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and then 1,500 in play development funds, which means that you work really closely with Christina and with myself <laughs> to think about how, as you're developing your play over time, and Christina would be the point person on the play development side. Um, you want to use those funds in terms of creating a workshop here, and it may be one workshop moment, or it may be you know, two smaller workshop opportunities, um, and that's something that through the process will be discussed and figured out, but that those funds are yours to use. Um, and then participation in facilitated monthly meetings, um, and that is really with Christina. Oh, welcome. Hello. <coughs> we were just going through the um, application process at this time. And if you could sign in, that would be great. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so we're just, I'm literally like walking you through the application process of the, and those time for questions as well. But basically we're discussing now, um, I don't know how much you know about the program, but there's two ways to apply to the Many Voices program. One, in the fellowship side of things, which is this $10,000 stipend, $2,500 towards living expenses, and $1,500 in play development funds. Um, and or you can apply the mentorship, um, and that is, um, which Christina will talk about more when we get there. Um, so you have to sort of figure out which you're the best candidate for, but I would say the fellowship is really for somebody who, you know, has been doing some writing, is really, really serious about writing, has a full-length play, has no more than one um, fully full professional production, um, but is, you know, on a, a serious career track towards playwriting, um, whereas the mentorship is 
uh, great for someone who's just sort of starting out or maybe, um, you know, an actor who's transitioning into um, into her, into writing. Like um, this year we have Anza Cheo, who's a really brilliant uh, actor who wanted to try playwriting. Um, or if you're somebody who is, you know, just sort of younger in your career and maybe not as far along in terms of the amount of scripts that you have and really are looking for more guidance to mm -hmm. get to a level where you have a full script. Um, so those are kind of the two options. And if any point you have a question about where, which you feel like you'd be the better candidate for, what makes more sense to you, Christine and I are here to talk with you at any time about that. We can figure out what, what makes the most sense. Um, so just we're continuing on discussing the fellowships at this time. And um, in addition to the uh, monthly meetings with Christina, they'll be mentoring from local theater artists. So one of the things as we were redesigning the Many Voices Fellowship um, a couple of years ago, we were, um, looking at it, we really want to focus on mentorship as a key part of that um, program. So we're really committed, as with all of our fellowships, but specifically with this fellowship, on how we can bring in artists from the community, artists from other communities, to really spend time with the fellows and really connect them to professional institutions. Um, one of the things that we do with the fellowship program is we take a trip um, and we'll be going to Chicago this year. Um, and that's sort of an industry trip where you get to meet people in the industry, get to see plays in Chicago, and um, connect with a different community. Obviously, anybody here, we'd be connecting very deeply with the Minneapolis community. Mm -hmm. um, we also in um, have this Visiting Artistic Leaders program as part of the Playwright Center, where we bring in leaders from all across the country. So that would be artistic directors, associate artistic directors. Um, we bring in about eight or 10 that we fly in every year to meet with our writers. And we have salons and you'd be part of that as well and invited to participate in those moments. Um, and in addition to that, you would have complimentary membership to the Playwright Center for two years. So even beyond your time um, as a fellow. So just in terms of eligibility, um, recipients must re maintain residence in Minnesota within 25, 75 miles of the Twin Cities during the grant period. So that's July 2014 to June 30th, 2015. Um, recipients of previous Many Voices Fellowships are eligible to apply. I, am, I know that doesn't really affect any of you in the room, but um, just so that you know that that those since it, we feel like the, um, the program has changed significantly from its other iteration that we've opened up the pool to include um, people who have received it in the past. Um, applicants for the fellowship may not have had more than one play produced by professional theaters at the time of the application. So this is just an important component. We really want to make sure that the that we're serving the people who will most benefit from this program and we've identified them as emerging writers and feel that those um, writers shouldn't have more than one play produced unlike our Jerome fellowship which you know <clears throat> you could also apply for where you can have two professional productions so that distinguishes the Jerome fellowship from the many voices fellowship program and if you receive many voices <coughs> fellowship um, even two years in a row, you would then still be eligible for the Jerome Fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, and then while a current or previous Many Voices Fellow may reapply for a second fellowship year, the fellowships may only be repeated once. So essentially saying that the maximum that you can have are two fellowships. Um, conditions and requirements, these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, Many Voices Fellowships are available to artists of color 21 years of age or older who are citizens or permanent residents of the United States. Um, fellowship recipients may not have received any other Playwright Center fellowships or grants during the grant year. So that's our general policy. You can't get more than one fellowship a year. Uh, students K through 12 in educational programs or enrolled in undergraduate and graduate degree programs are not eligible. So it's not for students. Um, recipients are required to participate actively in the Playwright Center programming and community. 
and that really just means that we want you got you to be part of our community that this is a resource that um, we feel like is going to benefit you and that you should take advantage of it as much as possible and and it just talks about the fellowship year selection um, process is applicants are screened for eligibility by the playwright center and evaluated by an initial selection committee so we basically send your scripts off to a bunch of readers who then evaluate it the finalists then um, are sent to um, our panel mm -hmm. so that is a, a national panel um, of uh, professionals and they will evaluate the scripts and make the final selection so it's important for you guys to know that the playwrights and our staff is not at all <coughs> involved in the selection process we are here to facilitate and help in the application process um, and on the other end of the equation once you receive the fellowship but we're not um, the people who decide who receives mm -hmm. the fellowships And I also just want to state, if for some reason you don't <coughs> receive a fellowship in, in any given year, that you should not be discouraged from reapplying for a fellowship because A, you probably have grown as a writer over the course of that year, and B, um, we always have a different selection panel. So it's never the same panel. Mm. So it's a different right. group of people with different, you know, um, with different perspectives so that just you know I really always encourage people to reapply if they haven't received a fellowship yes entirely different or yes, is entirely entirely different, different. Yes. Cool. always always yeah. um, and also the thing to note too when you guys are submitting your work samples is because we have um, such a prestigious swath of people who work in the regional theater community reading mm -hmm. your scripts mm -hmm. at the very beginning of the process you want to make sure you're putting you know your best work forward because mm -hmm. even if you're not selected they're still becoming familiar with your work your name and your voice mm -hmm. and so that you know continues to go with you beyond just applying to her simple program like your name is suddenly out there mm -hmm. with you know whoever the reader was in New York who read your play at XYZ theater so um, which can always be a good thing because then you're getting exposure that you would normally get if you're just, you know, keeping your play to yourself. So yeah, that's I think something that's to note. Excellent too. point. It's, um, <clears throat> it's not an anonymous application because um, we're not judging plays, we're judging, you know, playwrights. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really about kind of who you are in addition to your play. And obviously the play counts for a large percentage of that. But your application in terms of what you state also is really important which is why it's not an anonymous application. Um, and, you know, as Christy was saying, so that people get to know you even if you're not selected. Sometimes we've had readers request scripts, which we never give them during the process, but, you know, afterwards, if, if you guys are interested then, and they want your script, um, we can, you know, send it forward. Um, so now on to the nuts and bolts of application. Um, so a completed reference form is available to download and that has all the information of where to do that. Um, and then create a single document in PDF format containing the following elements. So completed application form, your resume, an artistic statement, and um, that's no more than one page and it should address the following questions. Define why you consider yourself an emerging playwright. Um, why do you want to participate in the Many Voices <coughs> Fellowship? And how will this fellowship aid in your artistic development? And what are your goals during the fellowship? And again, this is really a chance for us to get to know you. Um, so here, just as honest and genuine, you know, just sort of avoid any kind of what you think is grant speak or anything of that. Like, it's really about um, just an genuinely answering in your voice the question. So it doesn't have to feel super formal. It can really feel like your voice and mm -hmm. um, who you are why that's going to be beneficial to you and I would say that you know people really do read these artist statements and that comes up in the panel discussions again not just about your play but about how you're presenting yourself your need for the fellowship at this point <coughs> time and mm -hmm. what you feel like the benefits are going to be and I think we've noticed sitting on the panels that a lot of times what people have stated in their artistic statement a lot of times can be the swing vote um, towards 
you know, one application over another based on what the stated goals are. So we would encourage you to really spend a lot of time thinking about how you want to answer the questions. And like Haley said, how you present yourself and almost thinking of it as like, you know, just speaking to the panel, like if you were in the room, what would you, what would you say to the panel? Yeah. Um, and as Christina mentioned, so we, um, we are, and just to reiterate, we are not on the panel at all, but we are present in the room and um, we take notes through that process. So also if for some reason you do not receive a fellowship at any time and you want feedback on your application, you can contact us for that as well. Um, and then the writing sample. So one full length play that is at least 50 pages in length. Um, and so that's very important that, you know, for this track of um, fellowship, we, we feel like that you have to have completed a play. Um, where's the mentorship? You don't necessarily have to have completed a full length play. Now, many people who apply for this have completed many plays and are, you know, far enough along in that career, but this is sort of the minimum requirement mm -hmm. is that you will have completed that play. And here's just sort of a logistics about how uh, you should present that. Um, and, it, and then here, this is very, very important. Applications must be received by February 13th um, at 11.50, by 11.59 p.m. So just make sure that your application is in. Obviously, you can hand it in before that, and we recommend <laughs> and not no, hand waiting to the last minute. minute, but that is the last minute of when we will be receiving the uh, application. Before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Just before Valentine's Day, it's true. Um, and this is just gives you some information about our sessions, which you attended, so you can check that off your list. <laughs> um, and questions about who to contact here. And then we have the mentorship. <coughs> so the mentorship. Oh, I didn't get one of those. Okay. So, um, just to, and then just jump in here anytime you want. I know. Christina Thanks. lost her voice, so I'm going to do a lot of talking. You're like, why is Christina here? And she's not doing much talking. Thank you. Because she lost her voice. So she will jump in and when necessary. When necessary. <laughs> when necessary. So the Many Voices Fellowship, uh, or, I'm sorry, the Many Voices Mentorship is um, just for two Minnesota-based artists. So um, that's just important to note that you have to be based here to receive the mentorship. Um, and this opportunity is comprised of a year-long artistic mentorship for artists with little or no previous playwriting experience. So as I stated, it's for somebody who's early in their career um, or somebody who may be far along in their uh, theater career but are newer to playwriting. So again, this year we had an actor. We also have Jamil Jude who's on a mentorship and he is a director-producer primarily who is now also transitioning into playwriting. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's uh, that. Um, and the opportunity is comprised of the year-long artistic mentorship that will focus on the nuts and bolts of playwriting through a curated package of services intended to aid the participant toward the completion of a play script. So again, a real goal for this part uh, for the mentorship is to complete a play. And Christina is your mm -hmm. uh, guiding post in that respect. And Christina herself is a wonderful, wonderful playwright who's received Jerome and McKnight fellowships and has been running the Many Voices program for a while now. Um, and she's an excellent mentor and teacher. So she would be the person that you'd be working closest with. And I and I think this, besides all that, but the, the main thing is because I've done all the programs here of running this program and also having gotten to Jerome and then having gotten to McKnight's and being a core writer, I'm familiar with all the programs because I've actually done them. And so I can also, you know, be a good guide in terms of helping you guys navigate, you know, future programs and transitioning out of this one into those as well. So. Great. Thank you. Um, and um, so and then you have a, a series of curated packages. So basically you um, get you are a member of the Playwright Center as well, but you get um, all of these benefits of membership for free um, in addition to a $1,000 stipend. So you get some um, financial, direct financial support, but m most of what you get um, 
are these services, <coughs> and which include um, two six-week classes taught by leading playwright professionals, several one-night seminars, a one-on-one -on -one session with a professional dramaturg, a staged reading, um, and the Playwright Center membership for two years. And then you'll also be meeting at least quarterly, perhaps more, with Christina to really go over and see where you are in your process and checking in so that you're really getting to that goal of completing a play so that then you can have your reading at the end of the fellowship time. Um, and in addition, you are part of this community. So, you know, our hope is that you would be coming to salons when you can and also, you know, participating and seeing readings and getting to know the center and taking advantage of the services that we have here that go beyond the actual direct services of the mentorship program. And a lot of the things that we've tried to curate in particular for the mentorship program because it's geared for artists who aren't necessarily playwrights is making these classes available usually in the fall we will have a beginning playwriting class of some sort taught by one of our playwrights and then in the spring it's more of an advanced class of some sort or a rewriting class and there's six-week classes to really help work in conjunction with someone who's just starting to write a play to be able to take these classes and help enhance the work that we do as we meet one-on-one -on -one. Um, because our meetings are not monthly these types of things help to supplement that and also to have other artists voices who might be more of a match as well um, to help you enhance your play development as you're going through the course of the year um, so we really kind of try we experimented with a lot of things to really figure out what seemed to be the best fit to work with people who are coming at this from different areas like performance art and poetry and acting and directing and this seemed to be like the best fit in terms of how to help um, continue monthly while we're not meeting to be able to work with you to help you do that. Yeah, and one of the great things about the mentorship, uh, which is sort of jumps off what you were saying, Christina, is that there's flexibility um, in the program. So it's really being responsive to wherever you might be. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling like you know you want to focus more on one aspect of writing or another aspect of writing, or you need strength in certain areas and not others, then we can pair you with the dramaturg that's appropriate for that. We can you know guide you to um, to meet people who are appropriate. You know, so it's really we try to make all of our fellowships, but you know, particularly in this mentorship, very nimble to you know what you guys need. And then one of the other things we do when you're accepted into the program at the beginning of the year is you write out a list of goals of what it is that you want to accomplish so that we have that as kind of a kind of a checklist so to speak to help you know <coughs> keep you accountable like oh you said you wanted to do this is this still a goal that you want to focus on or has it changed so that um, it's not so amorphous when you're starting and you know we can kind of help make sure that you stay on track because having done this program now for eight years the time goes really quickly and what feels like a year suddenly is six months suddenly is three and then it's over and um, you know some some artists don't set out to finish their plays like they wanted to and we I never want to see that happen. Like that means failure for me as mm -hmm. as a mentor. So I want to make sure that you know whatever I can do to keep you guys on track. Um, we're all here to help you guys do that. Yeah. <coughs> so um, eligibility uh, for this program, as we talked about, <coughs> being a resident of Minnesota, um, current or past Playwright Center. Core writers or recipients of other playwright center fellowships are not available uh, eligible. So again, you know, can't get more than one fellowship at any time, um, and it's pretty much the same in terms of uh, you can't be in school. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much the same guidelines as we talked about earlier. Um, and again, the screening is the same. So it's actually the same panel of people who will be selecting the fellowship will also be selecting. The, the mentorship um, track as well. So um, Playwright Center staff, again, is not at all part of it, but it's that same panel who review both 
the um, fellowship and the mentorship applications. Mm -hmm. And in this application, it's a reference form again, which is important. And then um, completed application form, a biography or resume. So if you do or resume, so if you don't feel like you have a full resume and you want to do a bio instead, you can. Um, we encourage a resume if, if you have one. Um, and an artistic statement um, with the questions, why do you want to participate in the Many Voices Mentorship Program, knowing it's obviously different from the fellowship program. How will this mentorship aid you in your artistic development? What are your goals during the mentorship program? Just so that we want to make sure that the goals are goals that we can help you achieve. And the writing sample of no more than 30 pages in any genre. So this is a, a real difference here. So if you have written a play, I would suggest a play. Um, <laughs> if you haven't written a play, you know, poetry, fiction, nonfiction, whatever, that is completely acceptable. Um, I just say that if you have written a play, it sort of shows that you, you know, have a little bit more experience and knowledge of theater. Um, but if you feel like your best work is fiction or poetry, then do that. Um, and then similar, just in terms of the uh, deadline, is also February 13th for this <coughs> program as well. Um, and then just applicants will be notified in April. We don't have a definitive date because we're still figuring out when the panel is going to meet. But as soon as we get the results from the panel, you guys will be notified. Um, I think that's pretty much covered. Do you feel like there's anything I didn't cover in that? <coughs> Maybe some of the questions that like time commitment. Time commitment? Yeah. So I think, you know, with the fellowship, um, we don't have stipulated a time commitment, so it's not like you have to clock in 20 hours at the Playwright Center or anything like that. Um, but we do have an expectation that you um, are a playwright and that you intend to be writing plays during this period, or at least a play. Um, and that's really important that it's not you're just taking the money and going to Hawaii or something like that. Although I know it's very tempting when it's minus four degrees right now. Um, so, but we know obviously that we have an expectation that you're going to be part of the Playwright Center, that you're going to be working as a writer, that you're committed to being a writer. Um, it's not that if in five years from now you decide you don't want to be a writer, we're not going to come hunt you down and, and take your fellowship money away. But that that is sort of the path that you're on and that you want to be pursuing. Um, and that you're part of this community, and that is really important, that you come to readings when you can come to the readings, um, that you come to the salons and meet with the artistic leaders when, when you can do that, um, and that you're really part of this community. If you're uh, on the fellowship track, you'll be taking that trip probably to Chicago. You'll also be invited to participate in the fellows retreat, um, mm -hmm. which happens annually up at Tufty Lake Center. Um, where all of the fellows sort of meet and talk about their goals for the year and sort of meet as a community, et cetera. So you're very much part of that playwriting community and the fellowship track. In the mentorship track, we have we imagine that your life is going to be filled with other ways of trying to earn a living because obviously you're only getting $1,000 on that track. <laughs> and so we don't think that you could just sit around and write plays the whole time. We understand that you probably have to have other jobs or another job and that this is something that you would be doing on a part-time basis as a part of your life um, so it doesn't mean that we think you're never you obviously we want you to spend time and be working on writing but we are realistic in our expectation that you can't just drop everything in your life to do the mentorship program and each year because the the makeup of fellows is so different both in the fellowship track and the mentorship track. Once we figure out who the group is, then I can sit down and talk to you guys specifically and we can work out a timetable for when it's best to meet because each group is different. What worked one year for one group to meet, you know, a few years we met at night because that worked, but this year I mean in the daytime because that's what works with this group so um, I can be my schedule is flexible enough where I can do that so we can look at that too yeah so that that's sort of the difference with those two one is really um, I'm a professional playwright I'm on that I'm emerging but I'm on that track to be 
a playwright specifically. And one is that I'm really interested in playwriting um, and I want to try it out and, and see if this is something that I want to pursue more and here are the resources that I have. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the two ways to, um, time commitment. And then no, choosing which track because they can't do both. Oh yeah. Oh yes. And just so it's clear, I don't know if this was clear. Excuse you me. can't actually apply for both options. You can't put your name in both pools. You have to sort of put just make a decision, and that's really conscious, not just in terms of like, oh, I'll put my, you know, I don't want to put two applications in, but we really feel like it's two different kinds of people would be applying for those things. So, again, just really consciously, like one is on this track of I want to be a playwright, um, and the other is more like I may want to be a playwright or I may want that to be part of my life, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, do you guys have questions about what about this, <coughs> th that differentiation or other questions about the application? No? Does anyone um, remotely have a question? <laughs> we had one question um, that I think we could, we could address as, um, for everyone. Um, someone asked, would it be recommended for playwrights who have not had a play produced to apply for the fellowship? Yes, I think okay. that the, absolutely. Um, so it's really hard to get a play produced um, professionally <laughs> as a playwright. I mean, that's something we just all have to acknowledge. It's really challenging. I mean, um, and there's many people who've not had productions, even um, um, people who are emerging writers. So I wouldn't let that deter you. Um, I feel, you know, if you're a writer and you, you view yourself as a writer and you feel like you have a strong play or strong plays, um, I, would I would encourage you to apply. Mm -hmm. I would definitely err on the side of applying rather than not applying. And I will ask, should I, hopefully I answer that question to that person and if they, have, if they want to follow up questions, please let me know. Yes. Any other questions? No? I have a question. So. Yeah. You said there's a group of like national readers and there's a panel. Those are two different bodied people, right? Yes. With no crossover. Right, that's correct. Okay. How big is your panel? The panel each year, there's three um, professionals on the panel. Mm -hmm. um, and the body of readers is enormous. You know, we have a very mm -hmm. large body of readers. Mm -hmm. um, each application is read by two different readers, and okay. it's the composite of those scores that yeah. kind of determine whether you go on to the next round. What is the rubric for scoring? Um, that's like, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, specific sort of application form where we talk, of, where we ask the evaluators to look at uh, your originality, your artistic voice, um, what you said in your artistic statement, how you are, um, you know, how you could benefit from the program. Those are all things that people are evaluating. Mm -hmm. As they go through, in addition to the the script mm -hmm. and you know um, an evidence for potential. And so again, we, we, part of it again is not just the script, but about how you're presenting yourself and how mm -hmm. this is going to be useful to you. And I and I just really emphasize that because I know people can get bogged down the script, and it's not that the script isn't important; it is very important. But also just making sure that you're positioning so yourself up. Well yeah, why mm -hmm. why it's going to benefit you? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, uh, it's a fellowship or a mentorship, and we want to be doing a service to the writer, and we want to you know make sure that it's a good match, that the program can really help this person. Mm -hmm. And then from going from the readerships, the reader stage to the panel stage, is it just like a top twenty? Is it a percentage? Like what is recommended to the panel? Yeah, that, that differentiates a little bit every year, mm -hmm. um, but I would say on average, there's about maybe well, it could be about fifteen uh, people who move on mm -hmm. in the fellowship. You know, I would say that's like an average. You know, sometimes if, if it's like there's two or three that are really on the same, that we might bump it a little bit more, a little less, mm -hmm. but around there. And then with the fellows, with the uh, mentorship, um, usually about ten or so. Mm -hmm. And then the panel deliberates yeah. on those that, that don't ring. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you didn't make it to the one, would you get some sort of, not this year, would you would you know if you made it? That's my question. Would you know yes. if you made it to the finals? Yeah. Yes, you would okay, know. Cool, cool, cool. 
And as I said, if you want um, feedback on your application, right. we are happy to provide that. Do you still have it from last year? We should, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> they, I got an email last year mm. asking if I was still interested in it because I made it to the final mm. 13. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I mean, we definitely are so encouraging to, people to reapply. To get some feedback. Yeah. It. And be awesome. mm -hmm. we keep the notes. Um, we have them. So sweet. I would say um, contact Amanda, actually. Okay. She'd be cool. the best person to, to contact about these awesome. notes. <laughs> Haley, could you talk a bit about the references and recommendations? What kind of people mm -hmm. should they get references from? Okay, I would say get recommendations from people who really know you. Um, so, you know, it's always a thing like, do you go with the person? A, I think it should be a professional. So when I say really know you, it shouldn't be your aunt. You know, right. <laughs> like it should be <laughs> it's somebody that you work with in a professional setting. Um, you know, if you know somebody who is well respected, um, as a professional, that helps, but it also is equally important that the person knows your work. So it shouldn't just be, oh, I know this person who's a big deal at this theater, but they don't, you know, we've had coffee once or twice. That's not the person that you want to ask. You know, right. um, you want it to be somebody who is a combination of somebody who is well respected um, or professional, even if we don't know them, just professional, um, and somebody who really knows your work and can speak to you as a writer but also as an individual and because you're going to be participating in this program so somebody who can speak to how you might be uh, in a community as well as how you might be you know in terms of your own writing skills uh, but those are really important as well because we look at the whole um, package of of how people present themselves and those references are, are very important i you know we've sat and definitely heard people remark about oh wow this person's really well regarded and for this and this and this reason. So. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And it can be a professor just so you may, if, if it's somebody, especially if you're newer um, to the field and you don't maybe have those uh, relationships with uh, professional people, especially in the mentorship um, line, you know, it can certainly be a professor of yours. Anything you want to add? No, I think we covered it. We covered everything? Okay, great. So. Well, if you have any other <coughs> questions, it doesn't have to be the end. Um, you're welcome to contact us. At, also, if you're out there remotely and you want to contact us, please feel free to call in with questions or email us. We're always available. Um, and yeah, just, just let us know if there's anything else that you want to know about the program. Or if you want to just sort of bounce ideas off of which is the best program for you to apply for, mm -hmm. again, we're available for that as well. Because I know sometimes that can be a little bit tricky to navigate. Yeah, that seems to be one of the biggest questions we get. Yeah. People trying to self-identify. Yeah. Mm. Great. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming Thank here. Thank you for Especially coming out tonight. Cold night. <laughs> Day. Although I told you I don't face. Yes, you did. I did. I did my diligence. You did. <laughs>